Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel we have the comments section with Brett Cooper. We have Brett Cooper on here. If you're unaware of who she is, she is a Daily Wire commentator. She has her own podcast called The Comment Section. And her role in the sphere is of course to be an entertainer and a commentator, but particularly to and for Generation Z, my generation. For the younger audience, she's a political commentator, hence working for Daily Wire. I don't have a problem with her rhetoric hardly ever. However, she posted a video entitled The Undefined undeniable link between food and cancer needs attention. And what I've noticed is that people in the right-wing party can either be bang on when it comes to diet and nutrition and fitness, or they can bring this overly disciplinary, overly arduous and onerous element to the table that is unrealistic and unsophisticated. And so I want to make sure that this isn't errant rhetoric, and we're going to go ahead and find out today. So before we jump into this video, subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already to gain access to one week early uploads, one extra video per week, ad-free content, and uncensored content, and also if you haven't bought my book already contraindicated, I would recommend you do that. There are paperback options, hardcover options, and ebook options currently available. So with that being said, let's now jump directly into the video. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. So if you guys have watched the show at all, then you know that I hate big food. I truly care about everybody being clean, eating clean, using all natural products. I mean, you guys can just see from the sponsors of the show. I'm extremely passionate about cutting out processed chemicals and my food, my own diet, our products, everything. I hope that you guys are encouraged to do the same. And today, I hope you are encouraged even more. So recently, I saw a documentary that was released on X from an 18-year-old girl named Grace Price, where she breaks down how toxic the entire food industry is and how this has fostered cancer into our society in such a prevalent, absolutely insane way. And I mean, I was just so blown away by this absolutely intelligent woman who was taking such a brave and bold stance against an entire industry, multiple industries, and a society that has warped our perception of how cancer is created and treated. We're going to talk about it today. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. Now, before we get into this, I just think it's important that we acknowledge how timely this documentary is because I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like I am seeing people get diagnosed with cancer right and left. You guys can drop some things in the comments. Let me know if that has been the experience in your- So far, so good. Yes, people are developing cancer even within my generation. It's, it's ridiculous how many people are getting diagnosed with cancer. It used to be an old people thing, but so did diabetes. It used to be an adult thing and now it's a child thing. Well, cancer will be the same way because if you understand what the etiology is behind cancer, the common denominator is behind all types of cancer, mitochondrial dysfunction, DNA derangement, etc., etc., and you know things that will induce such things, it becomes abundantly clear as to why it is becoming endemic in my generation, Gen Z. And it becomes very clear as to why it was exclusively an older person disease. As the generations shift and the food supply doesn't, or at least the food habits, you'll see that it really wasn't anything to do with age at all. But I mean, I was talking with my brother recently and he had five friends all in their early 30s, late 20s who were diagnosed with cancer. One of my best friends who is 26, she has had four, three or four girls from her sorority that have been diagnosed with very, very serious cancer, one of which is terminal. If you spend any time on social media or TikTok, oh my gosh, I'm like terrified of colon cancer now because colon cancer is the number one cancer killer for people under the age of 40, which is just ridiculous because they tell us that we shouldn't get colonoscopies until we're, I mean, just it's like, it's everywhere. And people have been looking for a cure for decades now. and it The cure isn't an additional externality. It is a curtailing of an already existing externality, that being food. Food. We'll get to that, I suspect, pretty soon. We're no closer to that goalpost. And most importantly, we're not discussing how we can prevent it. And obviously, this is something that does need to be prevented. So last month, Grace released her documentary that she's been working on for two years since she was 16. And guys, I just cannot stress how important it is that you go and watch all of this. Again, her name is Grace Price. You can find her on Twitter. It is the first thing that is pinned on her profile. It's 20 minutes long. Go watch it. You can watch it now. You can watch it afterwards. It is just so important. It is informative. It is educational. I just think that everyone should be required to watch this in schools. That is how good this is for a myriad of reasons. Now, she originally posted it on X with this message. She said, this is a huge day for X. My documentary, Cancer, A Foodborne Illness, is finally here. It is only on this platform that I am able to release a film that challenges big food conglomerates and mainstream health claims without fear of censorship. And that is very true. Here's the story of how I, an 18-year-old girl, spent two years relentlessly searching for the true cause of cancer. He yeah, we need more people my age that do this. So I've seen a lot of comments on my videos that are from people that typically are older that find me very refreshing. And the most common comment I get is about my age and how precocious I am. And I appreciate it. However, I don't want to 
be the only person in my generation that speaks out against it. We need more people to do such things in my generation. This is a perfect example of it. I have not watched this documentary and there may be things that are incorrect or off, but at least she is standing up to the absolute unequivocal fact that food plays a role. Let me just get this straight. If there's a food that causes cancer, it is not food. Food doesn't cause cancer. Ultra-processed, synthetic, human-made garbage made in labs and industrially with high heat and pressure is slop, poison. I found it. That is a baller post. That is an amazing introduction. I saw that. It came out about a month ago. I was hooked. And this documentary now has over 4 million views on X. It is still growing almost a month later. And one of the main things that she gets into in this documentary is how corrupt the entire institution of big food is. And this clip from the doc does a great job of breaking- The decision to industrialize our food supply was the worst decision that we have ever made. I think. At least one of them. The technological revolution is something I elucidate extensively in chapter four of my book. One of the things I spend an extensive amount of time on is the industrialization of our food supply. We decided to industrialize everything. That was the issue. Industrialization itself isn't a problem. It's efficient. And it allows for flourishing to occur in certain fields and sectors. With food, that was a big problem. What we need to be doing is encouraging people to raise their own animals and to have those very animals eventually slaughtered themselves. So you don't have to depend on anyone to make and supply your food except yourself. That's how it used to be until, well, the early 1900s. So really only a little over 100 years. It gives you kind of a taste of what you can expect from this documentary. How is this even legal? Well, it all started back in the 1980s when the USDA and HHS created the first dietary guidelines for Americans. Refrigeration was all the rage. These now Well, it was, it was a little earlier than the 1980s. And also, that was a picture of my plate. That's 2012. The USDA guidelines, they were released in the 1970s, and they expressed, well, vehemently and zealously to curtail the amount of saturated fat and cholesterol consumption in people's diets. That data was bought and paid for by the sugar industry. The sugar industry detailed in their own words and documentation how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and manipulate statistics in order to make it seem as if cholesterol were causing heart disease, all while exculpating and exonerating sugar. One of those professors, Dr. Mark Hegstead, became the head of the USDA after this and helped to author the 1977 USDA guidelines, I believe, to limit fat and cholesterol because they were, quote, causing heart disease. We know that sugar causes heart disease because it causes inflammation. Not only does it cause inflammation by binding to proteins within the body via glycation, thus launching an inflammatory cascade on the body because it perceives that new protein to be foreign, it actively damages the the insides of cells by destroying lipid rafts, tearing cell membranes to pieces, binding to DNA and promoting carcinogenesis by causing mutations to that DNA, and killing cells outright. That will reduce redox potential in a cell. That will kill mitochondria over time, but initially it will slow it down, which will increase your risk, and I am going to use the word risk here, for all types of disorders and diseases, like diabetes, Parkinsonian type diseases, and cancers. So, there we go. So yes, these guidelines are fallacious, but I'm trying to get some more information out there than is being covered in this video. The organizations were being funded by the exact companies that were pushing for the use of industrial oils as cooking oils. Instead yes, that as well. It was Procter & Gamble, two soap manufacturers, that discovered that they can use industrial waste product, that being cottonseed oil initially, to create soap for a much cheaper price because they figured out that they could solidify it and make it harder. Then they found that it mimicked cooking fat, that being lard, so then they developed Crisco in 1911. And ever since then, psh things have precipitated downward in terms of our health. It is reductionist in the extreme to attribute it only to seed oils. Industrialization allowed for many, many different things to occur. There are many consequences from the Industrial Revolution. It changed the entire world. For example, carbohydrate availability and those were processed foods that have refined carbohydrates in them. Not to say that refined carbohydrates are really in any way different compared to natural carbohydrates. They're the same molecule. They're just in higher concentrations and they're laden with seed oils alongside them. So that's a big issue. And if they're hydrogenated, that's even worse because of the artificial trans fat content. I say artificial artificial because trans fats themselves are not inherently bad because they're some animal products like conjugated linoleic acid. If they're artificially created from cis fats, that's the problem. ...funded by these companies to show that foods in their natural forms are more risky than the science experiment companies call food nowadays. 95% of the 2020 U.S. Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee had a conflict of interest with the big food and big pharma. That is an insane number. I mean, that conflict of interest is absolutely absurd. But I'm also not surprised because it's our government. This is what they do. They do insider trading. There's conflict of interests everywhere we turn. But this is involving our bodies, our health, prevention of illnesses, 
and they're still playing this game with us. This is how nutrition misinformation trickles down from the government to doctors and then to us. Despicable. I think that's the only word I can use. It is truly despicable. It is evil. And we have talked about this so much in the last few months. We can link some of those episodes below because I've loved, loved those pieces that we've done. But I truly cannot stress how important this is and how important everything that Grace is doing because your health is paramount. It is paramount to your freedom, to your ability to protect yourself, to protect your family, to be there for your family, to your mental well-being, literally everything. Like I genuinely cannot stress this enough. And that is why I take heart and soil every single day. Now, ever since I had become more- Oh, womp womp. Heart and Soil is a brand founded by misanthropic miscreant Paul Saladino, an absolute shill of the highest f***ing order, a liar, a dishonest individual and influencer in this space who knows absolutely nothing about anything regarding health and nutrition. He is a rapacious, cupidinous liar, and he's desperate to justify an addiction. He is an addict. He is addicted. Not only is he addicted to sugar, but he is addicted to money about the products that I use and the food that I eat, I've been reflecting on how delicate our bodies really are. We are susceptible to so much. We are like finely tuned machines with each part of our body playing a crucial role in keeping us ticking along, which is why it is so important to take care of every part of your body. And staying healthy and eating right can sound exhausting and overwhelming, which is why I'm so grateful for my organ supplements from Heart and Soil. Organs are the most nutrient rich food on the planet. You can get a hundred- Well, just because something's nutrient rich doesn't mean that you should necessarily be eating it. That is not the criterion of health. The absence of plant toxins is something. The absence of toxins in general is something to take a look at and very easy to overdo organs. Of course, in a supplement form like this, that's not really the case. But anyway, Brett, if you are watching this, I would recommend and I would suggest removing yourself from heart and soil because Paul Saladino should not profit off of anything that he does because he is a liar and he's a carbohydrate addict nutrients from organs than from muscle meat. Obviously, our ancestors were overall healthier. You can get completely sufficient and adequate nutrition from muscle meat. I do so myself. It's all I f***ing eat than we are today and what was their secret they ate animals nose to tail and heart false some tribes still do that most of the time they fed organs to dogs we ate muscle meat this was actually established with isotope analyses we know what we ate products can help you do that heart and soil offers a wide range of supplements to help with gut digestion brain sleep weight loss they're purported to do so just get adequate nutrition and all these things will fall in line doing so with muscle meat these are overpriced organ supplements that do not need to be bought and shouldn't be bought especially from heart and f soil they truly have something for everyone's unique health goals. Now, as you guys probably know, because I talk about it on the show constantly, I've really been working on trying to understand my female body, regulating my hormones, because again, it is a finely tuned machine. And so because of that, I started taking the fire starter and her package from Heart and Soil. Also, I think- Oh God. Brett, I am in character right now. However, my character is not completely fabricated ever. There's an aspect of my character that is concentrated, isolated, and then inflated for the channel. So just understand that I am putting on some sort of act, but it's not entirely fake and manufactured. I appreciate that you're arriving slowly towards the correct indicated dietary approach for human beings. I also appreciate that you are thinking independently for yourself, something that you do all the time on your channel and something more people need to be encouraged to do and given the encouragement and the invigoration to do. You help with that. Unfortunately, you're not quite there yet and you are making the same mistake that I made about a year and a half ago. Well, two years ago now, which is listening to this misanthropic ass and buying his products. I'll just leave it at that. But my knee injury, so I've added their joint supplement in the mix as well because I- If you want to fix your hormones, Brett, eat a bunch of fat, saturated fat, butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, and stay away from carbohydrates. Six to eight week transition period, slowly reducing the amount that you're consuming. We need that. My husband also tore his ACL and his MCL, so he is taking all of that because we are a mess. But Heart and Soil has our back. They're fixing us up. And I love that they are made from grass-fed, grass-finished, and regeneratively raised beef organs. Just try them out today and your health can thank me later. So go to heartandsoil.co and use code Cooper for 10% off your first order. Discount applies to one-time purchases. Again, guys, that is heartandsoil.co. Use code Cooper for 10% off your first order. I love these products. They are so amazing. You will love them. And it is so in line with what we we're talking about today. This is just one way that you can take control of your health because every day we are being lied to and manipulated about all of it. All the people are getting sick and they are dying because we are told there's no way to prevent this. Oh, oh, it's just genetics. Oh, it just, it just happens to people. I don't really know why it's skyrocketing and so many young people are getting cancer. I have no idea. Now in the documentary, she breaks down how cancer in large part is attributed to the foods that we eat, the institutions in which processed chemicals and sugar and food have prospered and how that is the root of just the- So see what you just said there was processed sugar. Sugar is sugar. If you put the molecule under a microscope, it's gonna be the same as 
a molecule from fruit, a sugar molecule. If you take sucrose from fruit, fructose, glucose. Processed sugar you're talking about is almost invariably sucrose, which is half glucose, half fructose, 50-50. That's what the disaccharide is. That's what disaccharide means. So I, I just wanted to cover that because this is this is similar Paul Saladino rhetoric that I made the mistake of following before. You eat fruit and meat together. Sorry, you're doing harm to yourself. End of problem. Yet, as she shows in the documentary, people are still under the assumption that cancer is largely a genetic problem, a problem that they cannot control or prevent. She even asked people on the street what they thought the leading cause of cancer was, and this is what they said. What would you say the number one cause of cancer is? Uh, that's an interesting question. Okay, well, the question already is a problem. There is no number one leading cause of cancer, really. You can't establish that, per se. If you can't establish it, which is arguable, it's debatable, it hasn't been established yet. It's been purported to be established as genetics. As she was saying was ridiculous, which is rightfully so, it is ridiculous. It's not true. But there is no answer to that. There are multiple different causes. So to answer her question, to reduce it to one thing, responsibly, chronic systemic inflammation, and mitochondrial dysfunction, also DNA damage and derangement. Now the question is what causes those things? Well, there's a slew of issues there. Those culprits include seed oils for multiple different reasons. Binge my channel to find out all the details on that. Carbohydrates, no matter the form, because they're all the same. Sorry, industrialization didn't really affect carbohydrates in their quality. They're the same molecule. They can be associated with different things. Those different things are problematic, not the carbohydrates themselves being more problematic than carbohydrates from natural sources, which even those aren't natural because they're man-made. Statin medications, which aren't medications. I'm saying that sardonically. There are mitochondrial poisons. Again, check out my channel for more information on that. High blood pressure, which is usually caused by inflammation, but it can further cause inflammation. Oxidation itself can induce inflammation. So if you're not getting sufficient antioxidants from, well, the earth, actually, from grounding, that can be an issue. Many different things. All of these things contribute. So does it sound like anything that Gen Z is doing? Oh yeah, it does. I have no idea, honestly. I'd say genetics. Um, genetics. Is it an inherited from genes and stuff? So I would think that's the number one cause. Yes, I would say cancer is a genetic disease. Typically, if your parents have it, you're more inclined to have it. And I mean, that <laughs> families, but I think that it's more about the lifestyle that your parents have emulated and taught you versus genetics. Obviously, there are cases where cancer is genetically based, but that is not the primary problem here. And these responses are crazy, but also not shocking at all because we are completely uneducated and misled about all of this. And Grace's documentary is just doing- Well, so far, Brett, it seems like you may be on that path as well. Very similar to my path, so I can't denigrate her too. I went on the same path. I'm just trying to steer it. <laughs> steer the path earlier. Many people don't get off that path. That's the problem. Will Witt, another political commentator in this space, is one of those people. Putting his nose in nutrition when he doesn't really completely understand it at all. So, also has fallen into the Paul Saladino trap. ...to try to fix this, and the response has been so inspiring to see. Again, over 4 million views. People are so excited about it. This one woman said, Grace, you are a true visionary, and your documentary empowered me tremendously. I am a single mom, age 41, obese, and on a health journey to cut out the garbage in our typical American diet. I'm going to be showing this documentary to my children and make it a family effort to make healthier food choices. Thank you for making this documentary and sharing it on the X platform. I mean, it is seriously so amazing, and it's amazing that an 18-year-old girl can have this impact. Remember that, we're gonna talk about it later. Another person said, where are you on Facebook? Every mom needs to watch this. I see moms with young kids who have metabolic issues and they blame it on their genes as they hand them a big bag of chips and a box of juice. I mean, everyone in general needs to watch this, but especially parents with the skyrocketing obesity rates that we're seeing in children right now, like this needs to be addressed. They cannot grow up not understanding their bodies and what they're putting into them and the consequences of our American diets. Like we physically cannot withstand to have another generation that is lied to in this way. And like we've talked about in depth at this point, a sad reality in our current society is how our food is you know, created and approved by institutions like the FDA, which receives money, as Grace was saying, from- Right, there are over 1,430 food additives approved by the FDA also featured in my book. There are also 36 drugs that have been approved and pulled since the FDA has been established. And the FDA hasn't really been established for too long. You can divide how many years it's been around by the amount of drugs that were approved and then taken back. I think it's about one drug every three or four years has been approved and then redacted, let's say, retracted. So no one should be trusting the FDA about anything, ever big food conglomerates. I mean, no wonder they say Cheerios are the best heart healthy choice and that eating too many eggs is dangerous when Kellogg's is writing them a check. Like, come on, it is right in front of our faces. I mean, it's all one big scheme. You guys probably understand this by now because I've talked about it so much. And she does a great job of breaking that down in her documentary, but she also showed us why this is so important and why we need to address it right now on a podcast episode that she did with Alex Clark on The Spillover. Just watch. So that's one thing. And then whenever we're, you know, in kindergarten, we're doing soccer practice, moms hand out Gatorade, 
made like it's no big deal. Capri Suns at every single birthday party. You wait in line on Fridays at a school lunch to get Bluebell ice cream. So that's a special thing they do on Fridays. Um, whenever you're in high school, it gets even worse because we know teens across America are suffering with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We're Caused by fructose, sugar consumption. Diabetic, one in five of us are obese, and... Diabetes caused by carbohydrate consumption, invariably. You will not find a type 2 diabetic that is not consuming carbohydrates. You can't do that. We're so stressed out of our minds. Mental health disorders have gone up like crazy. I mean, all of that is just horrifying. It is so, so sad. And the caption when she posted this clip was especially powerful. And she said, Gen Z's entire existence has been a wild experiment to see if ultra processed fake foods can sustain the population from day one. How many more... That's a good point, actually. Good perspective right there will we lose because we feel there isn't enough evidence to change our minds. Coca-Cola, Kellogg's, General Mills, the truth has been unveiled and it's not pretty. Gen Z's time is running out with every bite and you know it. God, it's just so good. She looked- Yep, 100% accurate right there. No punches in anything that she's doing. So again, I am urging you all to go watch this documentary, go to her page, go find it. It is required viewing before you can go watch another comment section episode. I'm like your mother right now. Go to your room and watch this. But this should be a fun thing because it's empowering. And this should empower you for two reasons. Number one, it should empower you with information about our bodies, our health, our food, and our medical systems so that you can take control of your life, which is objectively a good thing. And number two, this documentary and Grace herself as a person should empower all of you to be bold, especially young people. You should not be afraid to take a big swing just because you're young, just because you're 16 or 18 years old. You shouldn't wait to start pursuing what you're interested in until you have a college degree and you're in your 30s. Start now, you have the time, so take risks. This is literally the time in your life when you should be doing this. And do not let adults hold you back because they have a limited idea of what young people can accomplish because you truly are the future. Grace is the future, we are all the future. We should start working on that now. Well, guys, I hope you liked that. Okay, good. Pretty bang on there. The only thing that I would say, once again, Brett, if you're watching, you're probably not watching, but if you are watching, if you're listening, stop taking the heart and soil. Just eat meat and do not give your money to a charlatan like Paul Saladino. An absolute misanthropic miscreant. He has no idea how to interpret science properly. And if he does, he is purposely misrepresenting it. And in many cases, I think that is exactly what he is doing. I suggest that you review your decision and reconsider it. Instead, buy my book, Contraindicated, if you haven't already read. And the viewers, of course. I'm, ta I'm now I'm talking to the viewers now. And also subscribe to my Patreon if you haven't already, once again. And if you actually want to spend your money wisely, I suggest referring to the link on the bottom of the screen now, the Cerule link, to buy amazing products. The primary one being Stem and Hands Ultra a product that restores the rate proven unequivocally to do this at which you release stem cells from your bone marrow to the rate at which you could do such a thing at 18 years and younger if you didn't know your ability to release stem cells from your bone marrow for repair decreases slowly as you age to the point where when you're 50 your ability to release these stem cells decreases by 50 percent 70 by 70 percent etc even when fasting so i would recommend referring to the link on the screen below to get 10 percent off your order when signing up for monthly deliveries that being a permanent discount as as well as free shipping and you can use that link to find out more about their other products as well and if you'd like to learn more about their products before buying them which of course i would recommend that you do i would refer to the link on the top right corner of the screen the cerule products link which is a video that i did on cerule's products of course and also i would refer you to the description below which has a video link between myself and professor bart k expounding further upon these products as well as the business of cerule itself so refer to that link follow me on instagram follow me on x formerly known as twitter and also email me at edgo 14 at gmail.com if you have any questions or would like to figure out how to earn the Cerule products for free because who in the right mind wouldn't want that? So with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone that may, in very many cases, be absolutely correct like Brett is in this circumstance besides the heart and soil affiliation or someone that knows absolutely nothing about anything regarding health, nutrition, science, and etc, etc. So see you then.